G'day watchers, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm featuring another watch from Pagani Design. Now it's been a while since I reviewed uh, one from this brand um, and that one was courtesy of a local collaborator. But this one, uh, thank you to the supplier on AliExpress for making this available. So this is a Pagani Design uh, with the standard black cardboard box that it comes in and let's get into this. Right, so you got Pagani Design on the top there and then uh, this microfiber cloth for cleaning and the watch itself. Now inside here there's nothing uh, much except for the actual tag of the watch and then on the side uh, you've got kind of that manual uh, as well as a warranty card. Now I won't go, go into uh, those details because they're pretty basic uh, and I don't really need to show you, you guys that. I, I would think you're very familiar with how the work movements. So let's just uh, show you the actual watch itself. So this one is a Pagani Design 43mm PD1632 model. Uh, so the previous model which I reviewed, uh, kind of a heavy homage of a Tag Heuer Aqua Racer, was the 1617. This one is a newer model, uh, 1632, uh, just come onto the market I think in the last few months from my recollection. Okay, the sale price uh, right now, as I check it, is about 66 USD online. I don't know what their set MSRP is because that's a little bit of a mystery. Um, so if you know, uh, let me know. But it's somewhere in the vicinity of $120, I think, based on the information that I found. But it's a bit elusive, uh, to be honest. Okay, now getting into the movement here. The listing on AliExpress actually says Seagull 2813. Uh, but I don't think there's actually such a thing, or at least in my searches, I can't find any evidence of such a thing. Interestingly, there is a DG2813, uh, so that's likely what this movement represents. Uh, Dixmon Guangzhou uh, is the DG in DG2813. Uh, you know, pr pretty, pretty popular movement, I think, in many Chinese watches, even though I haven't featured a whole lot of it. Uh, and this is likely in reading around forums what is in here, even though I, I'm i not going to open this and, and check myself, right? This is really just a suspicion that's come through. So the movement is 21,600 beat per hour. It's a 22 joule movement, and that's likely what it is, even though that itself remains slight mystery. Uh, the, the power reserve is, is supposed to be 40 hours, but in uh, real life use, I can tell you it, it, it doesn't actually last that much. It's actually considerably less than that. I think if I put this watch down, it will stop running within a day uh, in my experience here. Okay, the, the movement does have manual winding. It does have a quick set date. In this case, uh, it's a black writing on white disc implemented at a three o'clock square window there that you can see. All right, and it does uh, have uh, hacking as well. So, you know, you can get those basic features. Uh, it does have a rated accuracy uh, that is absolutely unknown. I can't find any information on that. Uh, in actual use, it's pretty good though. It's running about plus nine seconds per day uh, on the wrist as I have used this over the last week. Okay, moving on to the case details here. The case is actually a 43 millimeter case, uh, similar or in fact, probably exactly the same as that Aqua Racer homage. Um, that previous watch was uh, described to be 316L steel. This one, they haven't actually said the words or the numbers, so 316L steel, but I suspect that's probably what it is. Uh, if not, it, it's you know one of the grades which is not too far from this in you know just looking at the, the way that they've managed to finish that polishing there. It, it does have the similar feel to many other 316L steel watches I've had. The height of the case is uh, uh, 14 millimeters uh, in, in thickness there. Uh, the lug width is uh, 22 uh, millimeters uh, with a lug to lug distance, which is you know, uh, quite, quite sizable, 50 millimeters between my thumbnails there. Okay, finishing wise, all right, the, the top here, okay, just let you look at it, hopefully it translates. Uh, it, there's a longitudinal brush top surface. Right, transi transitioning to polished surface on the sides here, right, and then uh, at the back here, just let you see that case back there is actually uh, circular brushing. Uh, the top of the bezel is also circular brushing, but you can't see a lot of it. It's just really that edge of that uh, steel there on the top of the bezel. Okay. Right, looking at the 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 case back now. 
Well, I'll just show you that. You know, the, the etching history is pretty decent. I've really quite enjoyed looking at the etching of these Pagani designs. Yes, it's not very deep, but you know, there, there's some detail there. I'll right, just let you see the details, uh, the model number, water resistance, uh, rating, sport, and all that. So with that screw in case back and uh, that screw in sign crown, and it is actually fairly decently signed, actually. That's actually got some depth to it. Uh, you know, it, it does have a, a dive watch construction, but interestingly, they've chosen only to give it a rating of 30 meters water resistant. I think that's just a minimal rating. They haven't bothered to actually put this through any pressure testing, I'm sure. With this case construction, it would actually perform to dive standards. But, you know, that's not what they've done. They've just given us 30 meters on the rating there. All right, moving on to dial now. Let's just show you that dial. Hopefully you can see some of the details here. It's kind of a, a, a black gloss dial, right? It's got a printed chapter ring around the outside. It's got printed words uh, in a Pagani design automatic. And annoyingly, they've done PT time, which... I don't know why why bother putting that. You know, I assume that's the distributor or the uh, parent company. It, it actually eludes searching because if you search for PT time, uh, all you get is actually Pacific time. That's that's the abbreviation for PT time. So I, I actually don't know exactly what that is. Let me know if you do. But uh, you know, why would you put that on the face of a watch? I think that's you know that's that's a bit of an unfortunate uh, decision. Uh, I have to say. Okay, so printed uh, all those details there, uh, but it does have orange uh, filled applied markers around the periphery. Uh, now, curiously, those are not loomed. Uh, the loom is on the syringe style hands that you see here, including uh, that arrow second hand, uh, as well as the loom pip on the bezel. So of course, obviously I'll put a loom shot right here for you to see how uh, those orange markers do not glow in the dark. And that's another curious thing, you know, to not uh, make those uh, markers glow. Okay, so bezel-wise, just let you look at the top, presumably is steel or aluminium insert, you know, they haven't said it's ceramic, so it certainly is not. And right, let you hear the, it's a little bit tinny, to be honest. Uh, it is a 90 click unidirectional dive style uh, bezel that that's what this is okay so on top of that is a, a very lightly domed there's a light dome on it uh, a hard lex crystal is what they've called it so you know hardened mineral glass is what it is it's not sapphire all right moving on to the bracelet now this is a completely brushed finishing so similar to that previous uh, aqua racer style watch complete brush finishing and not a single polished surface uh, on this uh, bracelet here it does have the solid end links uh, and then it's got a you know, very similar, uh, actually apologies, there is slight polished surfaces on the clasp itself, but nothing on the bracelet links. All right, push button deployment clasp, which, take a look at that, it's actually pretty well done, you know, for this price point uh, from a Chinese watch. This is possibly the best bracelet I've seen from a Chinese watch, actually, uh, you know, particularly at this price point. Uh, you know, it's custom, meaning you know, I do not see this repeated in other brands, unlike many other bracelets you see. The class may be just taken from a stock factory. This one looks like it is actually their own, uh, at least custom design piece. Okay, so that's the description of the watch. Uh, let's just put it on the wrist for the shot now. And there we go, you know, 43 millimeter Pagani design. This is the PD1632 on my 17 centimeter wrist and remember uh, it's pretty large 50 millimeters on the lug to lug distance there that's how it sits on my wrist All right sport watch i think i get away with it uh, but definitely a large piece all right guys so <laughs> that's the watch now what's the pros of this watch i, I think and again pretty impressive package at less than 70 usd right i i really do think that you know the steel uh you know it's, it's pretty solid you're getting a solid chunk of steel you're getting a bracelet which is you know, for the price, definitely not bad at all. And I, I don't feel like I want to rip this off. I actually kept this on uh, comfortably using it. Um, and overall, you know, yes, it is derivative. I think the case um, is actually, you know, very close or identical to that previous watch. And I'll try to put a, a shot of it on the side here for comparison in the, the Pagani Design Aqua Racer. It's either exactly the same or very, very similar, I think. Okay, so, so even though that's a little bit derivative, at least they've gone for a different dial design, different bezel design. So overall, it seems like an original combination to me, you know, and, and syringe hands as well, you know, it looks like an original uh, fresh combination. What's the weaknesses? Well, you know, 
Um, I've pointed some of these out uh, already. You know, the bezel action is pretty weak. You know, there's actually a bit of back play there. It doesn't feel like a very solid bezel. It's got minimal loom application. Really, they should have gone for more than that. Uh, and you know, there's no micro adjustment on this bracelet whatsoever. So just be aware of that. You're stuck with these link sizes, and if you're in between, you know, good luck to you. It's going to be too tight or too loose for comfort. I, I suspect. I'm just lucky enough that this has been you know, just right for me, I think. Okay, so, so that, that's really a lot of it. Now, the finishing as well, I will comment, uh, is slightly rough. If you feel the bracelet in hand, some of the, the edges do look like they could do with another pass. There's a bit of sharpness, uh, and particularly in the case, that particular edge there on the lug, there's a little bit of, you know, it just feels a bit unrefined. They uh, could do with a bit of passing over uh, just to make it that much smoother. So, you know, those are the negatives that I've found. So not perfect. Of course, it's not going to be perfect for under $70. But, you know, I think it's a damn good package, you know, for, for that the amount that they're asking for. So guys, there we go. Pagani Design 1632 model. Let me know your thoughts on this, uh, especially if you have any of these companies' um, uh, models and watches that you've experienced, or if you know any more about the company, because... You know, like many of these uh, Chinese mushrooms, they do seem to be a little bit of an enigma. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me. And as always, I'll catch you next time.